it's it's something different about working with a superstar artist like that's and you know it's just crazy so for to be able to pull through and you know give her what she wanted that's like it means a lot to me you know what i'm saying it, it means further proves that you know i have what it takes you know to be in this position Peace, what's going down? It's DJ Payne One for BeatStars.com. Very, very, very excited to have a special guest today, producer by the name of Jay Reed, who's buzzing. If you don't know who he is, <laughs> I, I don't know. You're not paying attention to social media. You're, you're not paying attention to, to the news. Obviously, congratulations are in order. You've worked with artists ranging from Rick Ross, Lil Wayne, Lloyd, Webby, uh, but you recently went platinum for the Nicki Minaj single, Chung Lee. Congratulations. Yes. Appreciate that, man. I appreciate it, man. I'm so humbled to be in a position like this to... You know what I'm saying? Show my talents off, man. It's it's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a big <laughs> deal, bro. Because it's not it's not just, you know, you went platinum off, off a rapper's single. You went platinum off a single from an artist who's transcended music and has entered into the mainstream as a as an icon that, that right. isn't just known for her music. She's known for her um, appearance. She's known for her personality. She's, no, she's known for all these other endeavors outside of music. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And like you said, it's it's a trip because, like you said, it, it was just, it wasn't like, it just came out the blue, but how it happened, it was almost like a fairy tale, man. It was just like, you know, the universe knew that this is something I always wanted, something I always worked for, and shoot, like, it was just handed to me in the most perfect way. Like, people don't even know this, like, a week up until, um, the week of us making Chun Lee, my birthday, we finished the song. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like three, four days after that, it came out on Beats One Radio, and she, you know the rest is history, man. It's crazy. Okay, so I definitely want to dig deeper into the process behind that, um, but let's let's go way back because I I read an interview that you did with with Complex, um, that a uh, rapper by the name of Brinks Billions, who's who's from New York, linked you with Nicki Minaj. Is that is that correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. My um, he's a, he's a long time friend. Like we. He's like an indie artist down here in Atlanta, man. He's been working so hard, and, uh, you know, he was working with Nicki as well. And uh, like you said, he had a song for her, and he was like, yo, I think I can get on this record. And uh, he let her hear it. it. This was back in probably like April of last year, you know what I'm saying? He let her hear it, and she was like, yo, we down here dancing to it right now, you know what I'm saying? And that was the Rich Sex beat, right? Uh, you know, long story short, like, she flew me out, man, you know, introduced me with Brinks, you know, um, he was there. And, you know, like you said, she brought me in the studio and was like, yo, I love your work, man. I heard, like, three beats, and all of them sound different, you know what I'm saying? And I would love to work with you, like, you know what I'm saying? So she was like, what you want to do? And I was like, shoot, I'm ready. Like, I, this is would be the perfect opportunity because, like you said, me being a producer, working with all these different artists, is like, it's it's something different about working with a superstar artist. Like, that's, and you know, it's just crazy. So, for to be able to pull through and you know give her what she wanted, that's like, it means a lot to me. You know what I'm saying? It, it means further proves that you know I have what it takes. You know, to be in this position. So let me back up. So Brinks is based in Atlanta. And you're also based in Georgia, correct? Yes, yes, yes. So I, I read he was from from New. Is he from New York? He's from New York. Okay. He was. I met, I met him in Atlanta, though. You know, um, like I said, you know, he might travel back and forth, but like I said, I met him originally here in Atlanta because that's where I stay, and I do a lot of my business here in Atlanta. So have you and him have had a relationship for a while then? Yeah, yeah. It was probably like two or three years prior to this situation. You know what I'm saying? And I actually I was working with him. I was making a lot of music with him first. You know what I'm saying? So that's really how. It came about. He was like, "Yo, that beat is crazy. Like, let me see what I can do." You know what I'm saying? So she trusted him. He trusted me, and shoot. At, at the end of the day, we made history. You know what I'm saying? Almost. So it's like, let's. You know, it's crazy. It, no, it is crazy because I'm listening to you talking, and it makes it seem like it was just so simple to schedule a session with Nikki. So, so she just literally all it was was you played the beat for <laughs> Brinks. He liked it. He sent it to her. She heard it, and she flew you out almost immediately. Yeah, but at the end of the day, like you said, she probably heard a couple more beats from me that I didn't know about that he probably sent to her. You know what I'm saying? And from that, she was like, yo, I love your sound. Like, your sound is just different because even the three or two beats that I heard, they don't even sound the same. Like, they're totally different. You know what I'm saying? So have you always had that level of, of versatility? Because I, I definitely, I listen to your SoundCloud 
and comparing what I heard on the SoundCloud versus the Chun Li record and, and, and versus the Brissett's record, right. they, they all sound very different. Um, right. I, I feel like maybe the stuff on your SoundCloud is more what we would expect from a Georgia-based artist, but right. you're still pushing the envelope a little, still a little experimental. It's because, I, like you said, basically a lot of people don't know that I was in a um, band from sixth grade to twelfth grade. You know what I'm saying? So like everything that I do is musical and it has something to do with music because that's what I really, half of my life was revolved around when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? So, and I started producing when I was 13. Um, so that also just, you know, prepared me for these kind of moments. Like at the end of the day, I know my program, I know scales, I know chords, I know progressions, you know, all that stuff has to do with the makeup of how I make my music, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so so what led you to make a beat that sounded so amenable to to the New York way of, of rapping? Well, really, honestly, like you said, that was her idea, and that's where she comes in at because she she knows the kind of music that I made, and that and that was all like you said that was displayed through the Rich Sex record. Um, but she was like, "Yo, I need this kind of song," you know what I'm saying? And I and she rapped me a few lyrics, and I was like. Okay, let me go see what I could do. So, you know, when I was out there in Cali, we had we had a different studio. I went in and worked, did like 15 different beats for her to choose from. So, like you said, at the end of the day, it wasn't just, I'm just giving you this one song, one beat, and here you go. I gave her like 15 different New York tracks, all different styles. Like you said, boom, bap type beats. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, she just, had, you know, really put it all together because really that was completely her idea. You know what I'm saying? For her to be like, I need a New York sound when she knows everything that's going on is pretty much trap. Um, that was like, to me, I was like, she calling me out. You know what I'm saying? So I really had to show what I was about at that point because if I didn't deliver, I would have probably been sitting back home. You know what I'm saying? And somebody probably else would have had the opportunity. So like you said, really, it was just a show and prove moment. So you were out there working in another studio. Do you typically make beats just on a, on a laptop? Is that what you had a mobile setup? Yeah, yeah, I had a well, I had a setup, but I was also in the bigger studios. I had the uh, the big speakers in the wall, uh, uh, the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? So it was a really nice setup. But at the end of the day, yeah, I work on my um, Razer laptop. All right, let's let's, let's talk about the actual Chun Li beat. Um, I saw the uh, producer grind video that you did. Shout out to producer grind. Um, and you broke down the Chun Li beat, and you actually called it. Um, and I quote, uh, pretty simply, you said, in the whole song, it's only two sounds, so that should tell you that it ain't just about the beat, it's also about the artist. So how did you learn to make beats that were simple, but left space in for the artist to do their thing, and had that pocket that just makes them want to rap? Well, a lot of people don't know this as well, but I'm a writer and a singer-songwriter. Uh, so at the end of the day, like I might make a few songs for myself like I, on, on my soundcloud i got an ep with me singing and rapping and you know making all the beats you know what i'm saying so at the end of the day people can understand like yeah i don't just make beats because a lot of beat makers and uh, i had to tell a lot of my producer friends that you know you do you definitely have to leave enough space for the artist to do something because if the beat just going crazy you got all these changes and stuff like that that the artist can't vibe to then he's really going to be reluctant to say what he really need to say or, you know what I'm saying, trying to say because there's too much going on, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I, I learned that early on. Like I said, I was, you know, a lot of people start off rapping, and I definitely started off rapping a long time ago. And from that, you know, I, I was making beats too, you know what I'm saying? So I was rapping and making beats, so I was curating the sound to myself and my, uh, my homies, you know what I'm saying, the people that I was rapping with. And, uh, shoot, it just carried from there, man. I've been doing it so long. So now, like you said, if she giving me a couple bars off a song that she wrote in her head, it's nothing for me to like, okay, let me just do this right here and see what she do or see how she react. If I need to go back and add more to it, then I'll do that. Okay, for, for the people watching it that are curious to hear this project, how do they find it on SoundCloud? The SoundCloud project is called Champagne. It is on, uh, like you said, my SoundCloud is Chevy Music. Uh, or you can type J. Reed Champagne and it's, it'll come up. It's also on all streaming sites. But like I said, uh, you know, it it actually displayed my full talent as a, a, a songwriter and a producer. You know what I'm saying? Um, but also, just a, another heads, I'm getting, I'm making a a debut of my first artist, Basil Rodriguez, um, who just released an EP named uh, Take Three in May, which went number six on iTunes charts, um, independent as well. Uh, so like you said, that's definitely it's just it's a lot of stuff I'm excited about, man. You know what I'm saying?
So after the um, Nicki Minaj records dropped, you received a lot of really good PR, Complex, Double XL, etc. What did you do to make the most of that opportunity so as to bring more attention to your brand as a producer? My first thing was the producer grind. Um, of course, I got a couple of more, uh, you know, things lined up, but my first thing was to get back to the, you know, the producers. Like, those are the people that, you know, really seek the the advice or the info from somebody like me. So I was like, let me get back to them, you know, because I also... You know, did a lot of articles when it first uh, the Chun Li came out. I did the Rolling Stone. I did the Vibe. I did Double XL. So I'm also like, you know, I, to me, my main focus is, you know, definitely creating my brand and building my brand, but also staying aware that in the music game, you still have to make music. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, my job is to, you know, continue to stay hot, continue to stay relevant. You know what I'm saying? Why, like you said, why the iron is on me? Let me continue to stay in people's faces. Um, like you said, people love the producer grind video. I'm, I'm, you know, very humble and appreciative for that opportunity. And now people like going crazy about it. It's like, you know, that's what I wanted. You know what I'm saying? So, so here, here's a question about a topic that comes up a lot. It came up on the last interview I, I, I just did, uh, with, with, uh, Young Forever Beats. It definitely came up in a major way with my interview with Street Runner. Publishing uh -huh. deals. Are you currently signed to one? Um, no, I'm currently not signed to one. And my advice is, you know, like you said, not to, you know, if you if you definitely need it, go ahead and do it. But if you if you are like a, a strong minded person, you can deal with a lot of different things and, you know, uh, administrate your own publishing and uh, register your own songs and keep track of your accounting and stuff like that. Then, shoot, you probably don't need to do one. You know, like you said, at the end of the day. You know, these companies are here to help, but at the end of the day, you got to help yourself first before they can come in and actually give you a hand and, you know, offer you these millions of dollars. You know, this is cool, but at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're pretty straight and forward with the stuff that's coming in. Like, you want to make sure you don't really get tied up in a lot of stuff, man. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I mean, I, I assume you had a, a few or maybe more than a few offers come your way. I got, I got, a, I got some now, you know what I'm saying? But like you said, it's just, I'm not reluctant to just jump to it because I know, you know, it's going to be money, you know, and that's a lot of people are influenced by the money, but I'm here to tell y'all, I didn't, you know, like cut down a couple deals because I, you know, money is not my main influence. My main influence is longevity and being able to do this for 10 to 20 years and create a, a, a stream of a, a, a artists coming through under my label, you know what I'm saying? Or like you said, under somebody with like Nikki, you know what I'm saying? Like just coming behind that and creating a longevity instead of just, oh, I got these five phones. Let me just bank off that and just go get me a Lamborghini and a house in Miami and just and be done. You know what I'm saying? That's that ain't what my head is right now. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of times that's where a lot of younger cats get messed up because you know the money look good, the money look great, you know. But at the end of the day, what comes with it and is it worth? You know, yo, 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 sanity. You gotta, you still gotta be the one working. Switching, switching gears. A lot of people might not know that uh, you recently set up an online beat catalog. Yeah, and that's yep. that's through Beat Stars, of course. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> and uh, my question to you is: with the whole industry versus internet conversation going, and given that you just had placements on probably the most talked about major label album of the quarter, what yep. made you decide to start selling beats online? because I'm getting so many inquiries that I really can't, I can't even count them all. I can't even get to them all. So at the end of the day, I'm trying to have a system where I still reach out to the people. They still have some kind of access, but also it's, it's, it's sort of exclusive as well in some ways where, you know, like you said, you know what you're coming for. You, you definitely have to, you know, be ready to spend the ticket, <laughs> you know? So at the end of the day, like, um, you know, I, I don't want to be watered out, but I, I definitely believe in the system and I believe in what's going on with, with I believe in you guys system beat star. And I, and I've seen the progress of other producers that they made being that is if they don't even have a big placement or not. So I think, you know, me having a big placement brings a lot of attention to my situation. And uh, I think beat stars is a great opportunity to, you know, help feed the people some, you know. So you have a, a different perspective than a lot of producers who uh, started with the online beat game and then try to transition into the industry game. You're, you're right. doing it the, the other way around. So what's what's your plan for attacking the online beat selling marketplace? It's marketing, like marketing through Instagram, marketing through my YouTube, almost like I, I just did on the producer ground, almost doing like more 
tip videos, stuff like that to help, you know, my fellow producers. You know, if I got a, a person and they only have a certain kind of budget, you know, like I said, um, being able to service those kind of people, you know, no matter the budget, we, we still be able to work with them, especially the talent level. Like if I believe in that talent, you know, I'll be ready to work, you know, and ready to do something because, like you said, I'm trying to build a, a strong system, a strong team, you know. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I feel like the online beat selling uh, marketplace is such a great compromise for producers who can still make a living off of that and then artists who can afford the tracks, get access to the talent, and then turn around and make a living off of that themselves. Definitely, definitely. All right, so last question then. Where can artists find you? So that not just producers, but artists as well looking for beats, producers looking for um, you to share more experiences as you journey through the through the industry. Where, where can we reach you? Well, um, my Instagram is jreedtheproducer, J-R-E-I-D, the producer. Um, but... Um, uh, I'm getting to, like you said, I'm doing the beat star, so I think I think my name on there would be Chevy Music or J Reed the producer as well. And um uh, email is uh Chevy Music C H E V I M U Z I C Universe. Um spelled straight out, Chevy Music Universe at gmail dot com. That's a any like a submission link uh that anybody can submit they records, uh writers, whatever, inquiries, whatever, you know. So like you said, that's different ways you can get in touch with me more so the instagram because i can see it faster um uh, but uh, and i can have somebody kind of go through it as well so you know definitely hit me up well jay reed i appreciate you sitting down sharing your knowledge sharing your experiences with us we'll definitely have to do a follow-up because I, I know more plaques are coming yes yeah, sir they're coming <laughs> yeah and i, and I want to talk about those but for now appreciate you i wish you much continued success we'll check in with you later all right man appreciate that man y'all y'all be easy